Welcome everybody, my name is Paul. I have a website called beststufftobuy.com and I've reviewed a lot of different products over the years. Bought and sold a lot of things on eBay and so on. And one of my hobbies is guitars and playing music. I'm not a professional, I don't go out and perform, but I have had lots of friends and little music parties and so on. And like a lot of people who view my videos, uh, we wonder how we can save money on good equipment and how we can find good stuff and so on. So in my search, I, I've come across a lot of different kinds of musical gear and I can't afford $5,000 guitars and I'm not a collector with a huge budget. So I go out and look for quality. And one of the things that uh, I've discovered, there's a lot of really great vintage guitars out there, very well made, that really last for a long, long time. And if you look for, out for them, uh, you're just going to get some really nice uh, gear. And I'm going to go a little bit uh, into this particular guitar right here. This guitar was made by Goya. And Goya had a relationship that originally started in Sweden, I believe. And they eventually uh, were, were really well known for very well-crafted guitars. And they made a deal with uh, Martin in the 70s. And I don't remember exactly all the details, but they produced some really high quality guitars and Martin put their name on it and after a while eventually they just uh, dropped that line. But this guitar has a Goya label on the outside and then the CF Martin Goya on the inside. And this is actually sort of a, a 12 fret parlor guitar and I can't believe it. It's just incredibly sonorous. It sounds really great. The action is really nice. It's probably laminate, you know. But it has a really great sound and there's a nice finish. <clears throat> the frets are all nice and sanded. It's, I call it my Mini Martin. It's a really fun go-to guitar I can hang on my wall. I feel like I want to learn a song or something. I grab this guitar and pick it up and start playing. Might not be perfectly in tune at the moment, <clears throat> but I want to recommend this guitar. I think it's called the uh, the Goya 234. So look it up. I'll put the, the information in the um, description below. So I'm going to go into another few products here besides guitars. Stay tuned because I have some really cool stuff coming up here. I want to go into gear here very quickly. A lot of people, when they get into guitars and playing music, they want to find different kinds of gear and it takes a while to kind of try different things and experiment and find out what your unique sound is. But along the way, I know one thing, I, I do like this thing called a looper here. Uh, you got to find some kind of a looper because it really you can add a whole other track to your own private productions and in the privacy of your home you can work on perfecting things. and. A looper is really helps. I'm just learning to use it. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but it's really a cool thing to have. Um, and this one has storage. It's called the Jam Man Solo. <clears throat> There's a number of good ones out there. I haven't reviewed them all, but I can say that this one is a good one, and I like it. And um, <clears throat> another thing is tuners. We all have these little plastic tuners like this. Maybe you know the little pitch pipe like this, or we have some kind of a, a snarky thing like this one here. And, you know, they're okay, they're electronic, they need batteries, and they're kind of breakable, this one is. But, <clears throat> if you want to play in your home and really get things right, you want a really professional tuner. And, I found that this one here, the, uh, it's called the Boss Chromatic Tuner, the TU-2. Um, there's a bunch of them out there. The thing is, this has a lot more precision than these little instruments here, this little tuning gadget here. And, it has a playthrough, so you can actually just practice and tune up while without going through into the sound box and so on. So I like this one. Um, it has a, a 9 volt center ground battery, typical of any other kinds of products like this. And then you open up this thing here in the back and then there's a battery in there. And I don't use a battery right now, but um, you can play with the battery. And this one I got, this is a Crybaby uh, wah pedal, the Dunlop version. I mean there's you know, I didn't discover wah pedals until quite late, actually very recently. And, uh, you know, you figure this thing's got to be, so it's really old, it's heavy. I don't know, it must be 25, 30 years old. I bought it for like 25 bucks on eBay. And I'll use it happily for a long time. And then if I want to sell it, I'll probably get my 20 bucks back. 
So this a wall pedal, you just got to try it out. If you don't know, it just can really expand. All you know can do some really amazing things with effects, um, and it has a whole range. So you can go from the low to the high and do that punchy Jimi Hendrix kind of thing. So now I'm going to review a few more guitars here. The next one here is an Aria. This is a 9510, I believe. Uh, Aria was a company in Japan and they went into developing high quality instruments of many different kinds and produced sometimes under different names. But, I mean, this guitar is probably from the late 70s and the action is like perfect and it just feels just professional grade. There's binding all around, there's no splitting. I don't know if this is laminate on the back, but there is, it looks like it's one piece. Um, I'm pretty confident that the top is probably, you know, real spruce. It's probably from the 70s, like I said, the bridge. There's a little bit of, a little tiny bit of, of bows, but I adjusted the bridge and sent it down and it's really, it has a really nice sound. It has a fairly narrow neck and it's very lightweight, very, very, very comfortable to play. It just kind of, you pick a guitar up and it just feels like a friend. That's the kind of thing you want to feel when you, you have a, an instrument that you love and want to enjoy. Now the next guitar is another one by Goya and again there were two years that they produced uh, in in uh, Japan and I bought this guitar for <laughs> I know I can't touch this guitar this quality guitar for anywhere near like at least three or four times what I paid maybe even more. Um, this was in the 70s this is a 1979 model it has the the original Goya headstock instead of the the Martin's type of style with the top straight has the Martin uh, it has it this is actually a full Goya it has a Goya inside and a Goya on the outside and uh, so it's a really beautiful guitar if you, it's hard to really show in a video like this but basically you can look at the construction of a of an instrument and just kind of see where how much labor and fine touch went into this. A beautiful back, that's probably two pieces of spruce. Um, that's probably laminate on the side. Really has a deep booming tone. on this camera probably does not do this justice it has a range of high tones you can tell the quality of guitar when you can see sense the really high frequencies and the low frequencies it's like a huge broad range and for performing in public uh, nowadays we have microphones and so on so you can make a laminate guitar sound pretty darn good with the right mic but um, this has a sort of an extra boom to it because it's a little more solid you can definitely tell the the heavier weight of this guitar is composed of this aria, um, but they're from around the same period. And again, you know, look at the construction quality and just look inside, and you can see how it's put together and how all the wood was sanded and just quality, quality all around. So the neck is, has a little bit more of a D shape here, um, and the surface is a little bit slightly rounded, just a tiny bit. It looks like it might be. A 12 inch or something but anyway great guitar oh it's a little bit out of tune I'll put the name of the model number um, on the description now last but not least I have a really in interesting instrument here Harmony guitars a lot of people know made a lot of really great guitars and they made for a lot of companies like Stella and K and so on but Harmony guitars had uh, some of the early ones were made out of solid wood and the history of guitars, you can look it up online, but there's a development that happened as guitars started to get electrified and they moved away from banjos. A banjo actually provided a lot of rhythm in a guitar in, in a performance too because there was a constant thumping, like a little drum, you know. So 
when banjos kind of went out of style and they didn't need the amplification, they got into amplification, they started producing some what they call a tenor guitar. A tenor guitar like this one, some of them were tuned like a banjo, but this one has the four strings and it's tuned like the G, uh, DGB, the top, I got it tuned down one notch, and this, look, this is a 1938, 1938, still has a straight neck. Now, the funny thing, the way, this is 1930s, is economically not a very good time, and they were very, very minimalistic, and if you look really carefully here, the tailstock piece it's just this metal that has six holes and there's only four strings and they also used a bridge that would have been wide enough to hold a six string. So probably what they did is say, well, we're running, instead of making some new bridges and so on to fit the four string, they just used this. So it's, you can improve it, but it has a very unique sound. It doesn't convey exactly, uh, you know, through this microphone, but it's so much... gotten used to the course. <laughs> That's the G. Because it's lacking a high C. Now, I'm not an expert player, but I got this kind of for fun and I'm going to play it and learn it a little bit because it has the, the banjo style tuning pegs in the back here and it has a uh, I have a little pickup that I a little condenser mic that I put in there, and I'm going to try out some really interesting stuff because I can get a, a little bit of chorus. I can get a lot going on with my looper pedal, so I encourage people to look out for these really great old instruments, rescue them, give them a new home, use them, make some music with them. Because look at this thing, it's 80 years old. How often has it been played? Well, I get to be one of the ones that plays it. I may sell this at one point. But anyway, for now, this is the 1938 tenor banjo, a tenor guitar made by Harmony. And there's a Harmony website where they keep a database of a lot of the old uh, serial numbers or the model numbers. And you can look this up. I can't remember the number right now. But um, again, I encourage people to try different instruments. And some of these really old instruments, they made some really strange things back in the early 20s and 30s. Combination of... I had something called a ukulele, which is a combination of a ukulele and a violin. <laughs> uh, so, again, the great products. I encourage people to go look out for them. And I have a website, bestuptobuy.com. I live in Virginia, and I have a little space in an antique store in Buchanan, Virginia, called The Best Place. And uh, I have a booth there, bestuptobuy.com. So, thanks again for watching, and hope to show you some more products in the near future. So here are a few clips of the guitars I just reviewed. Now this is the Goya Martin combination when they were owned by Martin. The model G234. It's like a parlor size. It's like a 12 frets at the neck. It's junior. It's just really sweet. It's a fun guitar to have. And I'm going to play basically some basic chords on each of the guitars just to make it kind of standardized. Right now I have some picks on my hand. Um, I'm learning to use these nice finger picks and so on. So let's see. sound. The microphone on this camera does not do it justice really. Um, I mean it'd be hard pressed to find this guitar this old. This is actually from the 70s you see. This is not just a, a walk in the store and buy a cheap guitar. This is a really well made guitar if you look at it carefully. So again I recommend it. Um, this is the Goya G234 that was under the company name of Martin as well with the Martin on the label inside. So this, the Aria guitar I just reviewed is the 
9510 and it's I don't know what wood is on here it, it's thin it may be a laminate but the, the way it's constructed the sound box is really really sweet it's very now I was tuned down to D Now I read a little report uh, online It said that actually if you measure it, there have been measurements on the, how long the sound sustains if you just hit a string and then they measure it and see how long it, the wood rings. And you know in a technical way, the, the thinner the wood, maybe it will vibrate a little bit longer in terms of the number of seconds and sustain, but overall people per, tend to prefer a solid wood guitar, completely solid wood, to to perform in. But these days, really, you know, the, the quality manufacturer, this was made in Japan again in 1970s, and any guitar that's still really great after 40 years, it's an heirloom quality guitar. You don't just buy this guitar and use it and throw it away. Um, this has been obviously cared for, and I'm going to care for it. I'm probably going to sell this one. This is the Goy I reviewed, and this is actually, I looked it up, it's actually got a Martin on the two years they made the Martin guitars in Japan, the Martin Goy guitars. This is um, probably, I'd consider it a better quality guitar than this, but I mean, in terms of the tone quality, each guitar is different and so on, but I mean, the, if you look at the manufacturer quality of these things, it's just, <laughs> it's really a lot of labor. Okay, so this is standard tuning. This is the Goya Martin 320M. I believe the M stands for maple. And um, I've heard, I don't know, I can't measure and prove, but I've heard that maple as a sound box of material um, has been used very, very successfully and produced a slightly different ringing tone than the um, mahogany that's on a lot of custom guitars. Anyway, this is a really beautiful car. Guitar, 40 years old, and it looks like new and plays like that. So those are heirloom quality. And once again, give a little more tone of this one here. <laughs> this one is so cute, I have to say. <laughs> My little uh, tenor guitar. Now you can tune these like a banjo. I've heard people who went from banjo and they went to tenor guitar and they you know tuned it to a banjo type of uh, 
chord. Now, one thing you got to remember on these old guitars. Now, the technology, this was the way they did it. I mean, this is a very, very simple um, tuning head. I don't want to eliminate them and ruin it or anything, but, you know, they're delicate. You have to kind of get them just in place. But once the strings stretch out, and uh, then the, it, it holds this tune rather well. <laughs> I'm used to the six strings. Now, Again, this uh, guitar so has a, it doesn't have much of the bass, obviously, so a lot of times they can be used for melody. If someone has a deeper voice, then they can play a, an instrument like a higher instrument, like a, a mandolin or this. Um, but it's an instrument that can be combined with others and uh, mixed in these days with uh, quality recording gear and so on. Beautiful, beautiful sound, very unique. <laughs> you got to remember on these things like for example the C chord which I'm, I don't need these two figures the E chord is not much different see the bridge move this is I didn't want to ruin the guitar by changing anything on here but if you are honest this bridge is <laughs> it's kind of basic <laughs> thing is the easiest. F is like and the D is the same. Okay, it's a little bit out of tune. So anyway, that's the 1938 Harmony tenor guitar produced for only a few years. Now modern companies including Martin make some new harmony guitars and they're very kind of expensive. Uh, but you can find some tenor guitars, uh, not just this one. I would go for actually a newer one. There's ones that were made I think a little bit later in the 50s and 60s or something. This being that old, I mean, <laughs> I'm lucky it's still even got a good neck on it, but it does. So but anyway, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So welcome everybody, my name is Paul. I'm making another demonstration of some uh, guitars today. I have made some other demonstrations for my site, beststufftobuy.com. And today I wanted to get into just a few really, really beautiful guitars that I have uh, just recently picked up and a couple of oldies. And I want to demonstrate to people just like myself where it's a hobby for us, we're not pros, but we love to play, and maybe we're not the greatest, but, you know, we learn, and, you know, music is such a beautiful thing, you keep learning all your life. And, or, and late in life, I decided I was going to buy a bunch of guitars and <laughs> try them all, so one of the ones I got here was this beautiful Framus, uh, this is a Framus parlor guitar, and maybe people don't know much about parlor guitars, but back before we had amplification and so on, and people would play in their own homes. They would have a little section of the house they called the parlor, and you didn't need to broadcast very loud, so you had a smaller guitar. And this has a, a fret, of the 12th fret is at the neck here, and it has a very delightful sound. It, this is actually 50 years old, 50 years old, made by a German guy, I guess his last name is Framus. And I have a, a I think it's called a Dean Markley pickup. It, just sticks, it's an acoustic resonator, sticks right on the guitar here, and this produces a very, very beautiful sound. Uh, and this little microphone is hooked up to a little amp called the Roland Cube. It has a bunch of different little mini amps. It's a very small speaker, 
but it has a very uh, delightful uh, effect in a small room. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit. Like I said, I'm a learner. I, I am very new to slide guitar, and I have this guitar tuned to a D. And one of the reasons I want to demonstrate guitars like this is because there's a lot of really beautiful guitars out there in the market. I mean, you just got to look for them. I mean, I, it's almost a shame that I had to pay for this guitar. It's so low. And I got a nice case for it. And I don't know, it's, 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 I don't play it very often, but it has a very unique sound. And I wanted to let people know who are new to playing guitar, maybe they're just starting into it. There's a lot of great guitars out there, and combined with modern effects and the way you can learn on YouTube and so on, it's just amazing what you can do now. Um, and I've watched many videos of people teaching me things, and uh, people who are like 10 years old and like experts already. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to demonstrate this particular sound because this guitar, again, you know, you might see it on eBay or something like it. You go, I don't know, maybe you should play it or not, you know. And why do we need another guitar? Well, I'm here to justify uh, the purchase of more guitars. So let's try this one right here. Um, let me get into the mood here with this little... So I'm just beginning learning a little bit of slide guitar and uh, it's just really beautiful. I got it tuned into uh, Open D and I'm trying this little glass pickup uh, thing here. It doesn't even fit right here but I know there's a lot of people out there listening to this that might be playing really really well but this is just so beautiful. You don't have to be an expert to make some beautiful sound. <laughs> Welcome back I'm again, Paul again, to demonstrate one more guitar. And today I have an Area Pro Fullerton model, Strat copy with the single, three singles, two tone knobs. Now this is a really beautiful guitar, I'll tell you. You know, uh, it was made in the 90s and I believe it was competitive with the, with the Strats at the time. This was made in Korea. It's really got Everything is very lightweight, it's solid, it has the through the back, through the back strings, really nice pickups. And I got it tuned to low D and I'm messing around with the low D.
a pro musician. I just want to demonstrate a little bit. I'm learning still. This is a really great example of a fantastic guitar that you can get today without spending tons of money. I am almost like ashamed to say how low I pay for this price, this guitar, including the shipping. <coughs> um, if I walked into a guitar store today and say, let me see that beautiful Strat up on the wall there, uh, I'm sure he would say in the three digits at least, uh, upper three digits. Uh, so anyway, this is a great guitar. The, the um, Aria Pro 2, built in the 90s, the Fulton model, 